Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you and also with you let us pray almighty god on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your holy spirit shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in a native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to the Serene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. E even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. 
then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response from the Psalms will be said responsively. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is the Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to the dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise, praise my God all I have my need. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The, to one is given through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another, faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another, the workings of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, the discernment of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. 
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Happy Pentecost. Happy Pentecost. It's nice to see so much red. You are welcome to shake your pom-poms whenever you want during the service. Any mention of the Spirit, shake the pom-poms. Any song, shake the pom-poms. Whenever you feel like it, shake the pom-poms. It's a little unepiscopalian, I know, but just go with it. I'm so glad to be back. We had a wonderful trip to California for my daughter's graduation. When we got back, we turned right around and then drove to Buffalo for a funeral yesterday, a funeral of a dear friend of ours named Al Price. Al was an amazing guy. He was grew up in uh, Buffalo in the inner city, African-American family was one of only 16 students at Princeton who were African-American in 1965, went on to become an architect and worked for almost all of his career at the University of Buffalo uh, in their School of Urban uh, Development and Design and Architecture, and was also a very devoted Episcopalian. How it helped to start and integrate a church, bishop, the former bishop back in the in the early 70s said, Al, I want you and your family to join this parish and help renew it and uh, integrate it. And he did. He went on to be very active in the National Episcopal Church. He was on the Executive Council, which is like the vestry for the National Episcopal Church, many terms at uh, General Convention. Uh, and at his funeral at the cathedral, uh, where Susan had worked for many years and got to know Al very well, the, uh, many of the tributes in the sermon talked about how Al, for all of his great distinctions and, and honors, was a very humble guy and was always interested in other people. And the words that were used for him was that Al showed up for people. He showed up for his family. His son talked about that. We sat next to a young African-American man who had been one of Al's students in later years and he said, Al was not just a teacher, but he helped change my life. A couple of conversations that really put me on a good path. Al showed up for his church. He showed up for his friends. He showed up for Susan when she was installed as rector of St. Stephen's in Troy. Al drove over to make sure he was there to show up for Susan. And so we had to go. We had to show up for Al. And as I thought about all those tributes, and as I was thinking about our scriptures today, the thing that really struck me was how God shows up for us. God showed up, of course, in creating the world. Not content just to be God. God said, let me create a, a whole universe so that I can have a relationship with people and things. And so created the universe. Then God showed up by calling Israel to be a special people who would bear witness to God's love and entered into a covenant relationship with the people of Israel, and then renewed that through the prophets, calling Israel to be a light to the nations, not just to be special in and of themselves, but special to be a witness to the rest of the world, to the whole Gentile uh, uh, world. And then God showed up in the person especially of Jesus. God showed up among us, taking on our human life so that he might know the joys and sorrows of our human existence. And that didn't end with the crucifixion, but God showed up again on Easter, bringing Jesus back from the dead and promising through that powerful sign, eternal life for all who call upon his name. And then Jesus showed up for his friends over and over. We've been hearing every Sunday for the last seven weeks the stories of Jesus showing up in his resurrected form to remind his friends, the disciples, of God's fulfillment of that promise. When he was about to leave them again to ascend into heaven, he said, don't worry, I will not leave you alone. And then on Pentecost, on that Jewish festival, when people were gathered from all over the known world. God bless the readers who have that reading uh, from Acts. 
everybody, you know, it's like you, you win the lottery or lose the lottery when you get that reading with all the different nations. But the reason they're all listed there is because that was virtually every country and people known at that time. In other words, everybody from around the world, there were representatives from the entire world in Jerusalem. They were all believers in God, Jews or proselytes. Proselytes were Gentiles who had come to faith in God through the Old Testament. They were all gathered there, but they were divided, right? We know what it's like to be divided. Our whole world seems divided in every possible way. They were divided. They didn't speak the same language. They couldn't understand each other. They couldn't understand the people in Jerusalem. They were of different cultures and races. They were divided. But then God showed up. As he had promised in the words of Jesus to the disciples, I will send you another advocate, a comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will be with you forever. <laughs> And suddenly, miraculously, without the help of Duolingo, which I've been toiling away on, they could understand each other, right? That ancient curse from the Tower of Babel. You remember your Sunday school, right? In the book of Genesis, once upon a time, everybody spoke the same language, but then they got prideful and they tried to build a tower to heaven so that they could fire God and take over. And God cursed them with many languages, with separate cultures. It's the answer to that question. Why are we so divided? Well, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, and that's the Tower of Babel. Well, Pentecost is this curse being eradicated. No longer will we be divided by race or culture or language or tribe. Now, God is showing up in a new and powerful way for everyone so that everyone might drink of one spirit, so that everyone might know one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. In this miracle of Pentecost, God shows up for the disciples, God shows up for all those people from all the different countries and languages and tribes, and God shows up for us. Because Pentecost was not a one-time thing. It wasn't a one-time miracle. God didn't just say, okay, you got the Spirit now, off you go. God said, you guys are good. God said, I'm going to renew that gift every single day. I'm going to show up for you. Every time two or three of you are gathered together at this table to receive the body and blood of Christ, I'm going to show up. Every time you call on my name, every time you pray, every time your life is falling apart, I am going to show up for you. I'm going to show up in your joys and your sorrows, your struggles and your grief. I will show up. I felt that yesterday at the funeral for my friend Al, and I feel it today and every day that I gather with you all in this place. I feel the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't you? Can't you sense it? Can't you feel it? That upwelling of God's presence. I hear it when we sing the Lord's Prayer uh, that Gregory wrote, and basically everything that Gregory ever wrote. <laughs> just to be honest. I see it in the creative gifts of Catherine and so many others who shared their gifts. I see it when we show up for each other in pastoral care, in friendship, in the cards that are sent to those who are bereaved or going through illness. I see it when we show up for our community in SOS by feeding those who are hungry, by putting Christmas baskets together for neighborhood house. I see it in the gifts of our Sunday school teachers and youth leaders who give up their time to help our young people to learn and grow in their faith. I feel that spirit. I feel that God is showing up. And I know that our challenge, our joy, and our privilege is to do our best to continue to show up. To show up for God by coming to church and renewing our faith and by showing up for each other, by striving to overcome the divisions 
that our world and culture are so desperate to keep us divided, right? They're so desperate to keep us afraid of each other, afraid and hating and suspicious. We need to show up and allow God to show up to heal those divisions, because that is God. We know from the Bible that is God's plan and dream and hope, is that that spirit that united those people in Jerusalem on the first Pentecost is working powerfully in our world today to bring us together, to know our common humanity as children of God, and to overcome fear and hatred with love and acceptance. And I pray that we'll also be able to continue to show up for our community by living lives that are self-offering and giving, where we strive to make a difference in the lives of others. Sitting next to that young man at the funeral yesterday and seeing his life, how it had been transformed by really a few brief interactions with my friend Al, I was reminded of the power that each of us has. We don't think we're that powerful, but you know what? We are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are filled with the power of the one who made the whole heavens and earth. We in and of ourselves might not be powerful, but God's power works in and through us in amazing ways that we can't always imagine or understand. That's the secret of Pentecost, that you and I, in our little humble selves, contain and manifest the awesome power and glory of God. May that Holy Spirit be with us. May that Holy Spirit be in us. And may that Holy Spirit work through us to the glory of God and the welfare of God's beloved world. Let us profess our faith in the faith of the whole church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary. He was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. We pray for the whole church, all leaders and ministers, and all the holy people of God. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, Wendell and Stewart, our retired bishops, and Eric and John, our priests, Lutheran bishops, Elizabeth, Donald, and Craig. For our diocesan household, remember especially Trinity Church in Monroe, and the Dominican Republic, Moises, their bishop, and St. Philip the Apostle in Santo Domingo that together we may be signs of Christ's light for all who have lived in darkness, of hope for all who know pain and suffering, 
and of love for all who have been rejected. Let us pray to the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, for all the nations of the earth, and for all who govern and judge. For Joe, our president, Gretchen, our governor, the Congress and the Supreme Court, and all our local elected officials, let us pray to the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hunger, those who thirst, those who cry out for justice, those who live under the threat of terror, and those without a place to lay their head, we remember especially the people of Ukraine, Turkey, and Syria. Let us pray to the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, hear our prayer. For this parish family gathered to eat and drink with the risen Lord, that we may be strong in faith, confident in hope, and abounding with love for God and neighbor, let us pray to the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly baptized and for those preparing for confirmation or reception, especially Jim, Martha, Charlotte, Selena, Zach, Quentin, Nolan, Matthew, Kara, Deb, Larry, Isaac, Toby, Eva, Evelyn, Paul, Michelle, that they may always keep the light of Christ burning in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Memorial Day weekend, let us remember our servicemen and women, especially Stephanie and Dylan. And, and for first responders, for peace in the world, and for all those who live in places of war, violence, and unrest, that with all God's people they may live in freedom and safety, let us pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill, those in pain, those under stress, and those who are lonely. For those commended to our prayers, especially Daniel, Renee, Margaret, Murray, Rose, and Robin, Sylvia, George, Catherine, Gregory, John, and Virginia, Elise, Rob, and Sue, Wilma, Leo, and Jane, Jim, David, and Karen. Mary Jane, Sarah, Henry and Sheila, Jane, Nancy, Daniel, and those we name now. Let us pray to the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those we name now, including Al and Dave. May they live forever with Christ in the glory of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation, with blessed Philip and all the saints who have borne witness to the risen Christ, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Alleluia. To you, O Lord, we give praise and glory. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in whose hands are the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all your servants who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. Grant to them your mercy and the light of your presence, and give us such a lively sense of your righteous will that the work which you have begun in them may be perfected through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace. Peace, John. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Birthday? No, peace. All right, please be seated. Good morning and welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, several announcements for you. One is that this Saturday is the diocesan confirmation and that long list of people that we prayed for is going to be confirmed or received. And then next Sunday, the youth confirmands are going to take over our service and share with us their faith and help lead the prayers. They've written their own creed, which we're going to say uh, it's going to be a wonderful celebration. Um, 
We are also honoring graduates, not next Sunday, but on the 18th of June, uh, Tommy Farrell and Izzy uh, Beck are both graduating high school. Uh, so join us for that. And I wanna mention too, that we have a new live stream technology. I put it in the newsletter, but uh, you get a prize if you can find the camera. Yeah, it's back there. <laughs> but we will now be phasing out. I know everyone's going to miss it, but we're going to phase out the, the duct tape and the wire. <laughs> and uh, I love this little microphone. Hello, microphone. This was my little podcasting microphone, and we put it to use for the pandemic. And three years later, we're still using it. So we are delighted. Um, with the new technology. We're testing it out today. There will be some differences. If you're looking for it, it will not be on Zoom. Zoom is going to be phased out. This will be live streamed directly to YouTube. And there are instructions in the newsletter. We'll keep repeating those of how to find that live stream. And it will also be archived there so you can go back and watch any services. But we hope, and Brian's doing his best in the back there. Thank you, Brian, our technician this morning. Um, to make sure that the picture and sound are going to look and sound so much better than what we've been able to do. And I do want to give a, a shout out to Jonathan Lindley and Eric Hatchett, who have been doing this ministry every week for three years. So thanks to them. <laughs> Brian, Brian McBride has joined the team. We could use a couple more. We would love to have you know, a, a rota like we have for other things where they don't have to be on every week, but maybe once a month would be really nice. Um, though Eric has really enjoyed being here every Sunday, I think, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, thanks to everybody. Thanks also to the family of Frank Lude and to the Thursday lunch group who uh, contributed mightily to make this project possible. Really appreciate all those people. And we give thanks again for the life of Frank, who is such a integral part of our church and B, his widow has moved to uh, Plymouth and has joined St. John's in Plymouth and is fitting in great. She says hi to everybody and hopes to visit sometime soon. We have a number of fellowship opportunities coming up. Uh, you can read about those in the newsletter. Hope you can join us for the birthday lunch, the women's lunch and the men's fellowship all coming up in the next week or so. And I also wanna give a special thanks to those who worked hard on our SOS project this past week. We were able to serve 63 people on four different days, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And uh, Judy Marchioni, would you stand up? Judy was our fearless leader for this project. And I'd also like to thank everybody who donated or helped in any way. Would you stand up if you helped to cook or to clean or donated money or helped deliver meals? We really appreciate all of you. Because of your efforts, we continue to be able to show up for our community. And that is the power of the Spirit working in and through us. So thank you all. Any other announcements? Oh, uh, the birthday prayer. Yes, we didn't have any other birthdays or anniversaries, so we should say it. Pat is right. Let us say together the birthday prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, in you we live and move and have our being. Your love gives us life and sustains all of our relationships. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they remember and celebrate all the anniversaries of their lives, including their birth, baptism, marriage, ordination, and others, especially Madeline, Kathy, and Ryan. Sustain them with your bountiful spirit and grant them the grace to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart in this life and in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Son, to share our human nature, 
to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom, all this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us the strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who enlightened the minds of the disciples by pouring out upon them the Holy Spirit, make you rich with his blessing, that you may abound more and more in that spirit forever. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit as a flame of fire that rested upon the heads of the disciples, burn out all evil from your hearts and make them shine with the pure light of his presence. Amen. May God, who by the Holy Spirit caused those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear witness to him in word and deed. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.